It's too early to hand out grades for the NFL Draft on Monday after the draft ends, let alone when there are still 222 picks to go. We have to wait to actually see these players suit up on Sunday for a couple of seasons before we'll have meaningful insight into how each organization did, but for now, we can hand out superlatives for the most memorable moments we saw on Thursday night. The most inexplicable trade cycle belongs to the New York Giants, who filled holes they created for themselves over the last year. Dave Gettleman traded away Damon Harrison and Eli Apple before letting Landon Collins leave in free agency. Then, to solve his problems, he traded away Odell Beckham. He acquired a replacement for Collins and Jabril Peppers, and then on Thursday, Gettleman used the first round pick he acquired from the Browns to draft defensive tackle Dexter Lawrence, who profiles as the long-term replacement for Damon Harrison. Then, he traded up to the bottom of the first round to draft cornerback DeAndre Baker as a replacement for Apple. This is like forgetting where you parked your car and then selling your house to buy a fancy new car. The best failure of the night belongs to the New York Jets, who wanted to trade down from the third overall pick to recoup some of the selections they sent to Indy as part of the Sam Darnold trade last year. They couldn't find a trading partner for the third pick, so instead, the Jets just had to settle for taking Quinn and Williams, who might be the best player independent of position in the entire draft. The Alabama Stars should team with Leonard Williams to make up the most devastating pair of Williamses in recent league history. He also wore his braces to the draft, which somehow makes him scarier to me. Unexpected compliment of the night goes to Washington. And hey, I think we all expected Washington to do something stupid when the rumors about Daniel Snyder taking over the draft process started to circulate this week. But the first round went about as well as any fan could have imagined. Jay Gruden's team stayed put and still managed to draft their quarterback of the future by taking Dwayne Haskins at 15. And while they gave up a 2020 second round pick to move back into the first round, drafting Montez Sweat gave Washington a second possible difference maker at a key position. If I told you before the draft that they would come away with Haskins and Sweat without having to give away a future first round pick, that would have been considered a victory. So it is. The most painful witness to a trade-up has to be the Houston Texans, and it can't feel great to be Houston, who were absolutely desperate for left tackle help and saw Andre Dillard nearly make it to them at 23, only for the Philadelphia Eagles to move up three spots and beat them to the punch. What makes this worse? The Eagles don't even need a left tackle yet, given that Dillard won't need to take over for Jason Peters until the 2020 season at the earliest. The Texans, who are desperate for immediate help at tackle, ended up grabbing Alabama State product Titus Howard, who was regarded as a developmental tackle. The Rich Get Richer Award belongs to the Jacksonville Jaguars, who already had one of the best defensive lines in football, but they took things a step further by drafting Josh Allen when he fell to them with the seventh pick in the first round. Now, this crushed my dream of the Bills having two Josh Allens on their roster at the same time, but it shouldn't be a surprise that the Jaguars went after another lineman. Remember that Tom Coughlin won two Super Bowls against the Patriots with dominant performances by the likes of Michael Strahan, Justin Tuck, Osei Uminiora, and Jason Pierre-Paul. Unless the Jags drafted Allen with the idea that he'll replace Yannick Ngakwe as part of a trade for Ngakwe, they're going to try and emulate the Giants formula and take the same formula that Nick Foles used to win a Super Bowl with his deep defensive line in Philadelphia. The quote of the night belongs to Dolphins defensive tackle Christian Wilkins, who was asked why he was so excited to play in Miami, and he responded appropriately. I know about that no state income tax down there. I can't fault Christian Wilkins for thinking that about the state of Florida.